Suppose I had connected a hose to the water faucet on my house, and I had a nozzle on the end of the hose, and I wanted to know how fast the water was going to come out of that nozzle. If I knew what the pressure was here, and I assumed that I had pretty low losses in the hose, because the flow velocity in the hose wasn't very large, I could then figure out what velocity I was likely to have coming out of the narrowed constricted section of the nozzle using Bernoulli's equation. So I'd have to make the assumptions that the friction was negligible in order to be able to make that prediction, but it probably wouldn't be too bad a prediction as long as I kept the flow rate relatively low. So let's assume that our household pressure is, oh, let's say 300 kilopascals. and our pressure, that's our supply pressure, and it's also the pressure right here at location 1. We follow a streamline from location 1 and the fluid accelerates quite a bit to location 2 where it comes out to the atmosphere here. It's going quite fast much faster than it is over here at location 1. We can use Bernoulli's equation to figure out how fast. Z1 plus P1 over rho g plus V1 squared over 2g must be equal to Z2 plus P2 over rho g plus V2 squared over 2g. Now I can make some assumptions. This is horizontal between 1 and 2. So z1 and z2 are equal and they cancel out. Likewise, if I'm working in gauge pressure, then p2 is equal to 0. It's atmospheric, so it's 0 pressure gauge. If I wanted to make my life really simple, I can assume that the hose is really big compared to the outlet of the, uh, the nozzle, and so that the velocity at 1 is really close to 0. Not exactly 0, but it's not moving very fast compared to what's coming out of the nozzle. And so I'll wind up with P1 over rho g equal to V2 squared over 2g. Or if I rearrange that, V2 squared equal to 2 times P1 over rho. The g's will cancel out here. 2 times 300 kilopascals, so that's 300 times 10 to the third, divided by, if it's water, 998. That's P squared, plugging in 2 times 300 times 10 to the third, divided by 998, is 600 and a little bit. And taking the square root of that, the velocity will be 24.5 meters per second. Now let's just ask ourselves about this assumption that V1 was equal to zero. It looks like that outlet diameter is about a quarter of the hose diameter. That means that the area will be about a sixteenth of the area. So if I do conservation of mass, this is going 16 times faster than that. Now 16 squared is quite a large number, 256. So this term here, this V2 term, is 256 times as big as that term. So 
our error is less than half of 1% in our assumption that V1 is close to zero, even if the geometry is just as it's shown. So a very good approximation. And as long as we don't have significant losses in our hose, then we can start with our supply pressure and we'll get about 24.5 meters per second as the speed at which the water comes out of the nozzle. If we open up the nozzle and make it wider, this velocity will go up, the friction in the hose will go up, and all of our approximations of zero friction will go away. And then we'll have to account for the friction, and we'll do that in some other examples.